From the studios of Cheshire TV in Keene, New Hampshire, it's The Men's Room, a show by men, about men, and for everyone. Sponsored by the Monadnock Men's Resource Center and hosted by Damian Licata and Forrest Seymour. Hello everyone and welcome to The Men's Room. I'm Damian Licata and sitting across from me is Forrest Seymour. Hello over there. Hello over there and we have a special guest today who I'll be introducing in a moment or Forrest will introduce. Yeah. Um, so we meet here every week. We talk men's issues, things of interest to men, uh, subjects pertaining to masculinity and so on. Yeah. We are sponsored by the Monadnock Men's Resource Center. Which also sponsors a drop-in support group every Sunday night at 7 o'clock at 25 Roxbury Street right next to Obishan's Hardware and we're going to talk more about that at the end of the show so That's stay right. tuned for that, that those tidbits. Yep. But we want to get right on to our guest today. We do. So we have as much time as possible. And yep. our, our guest today is Mario Casa who um, is a psychodramatist, a drama therapist and theater educator. Has lived in the Monadnock region since the early 1970s. He was the founder and director of Acting Out for 13 years until 2000. And since then, he has been traveling and training folks in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and England in, um, we assume, psychodrama. And uh, we're- You assume well. All right, and it's great to have you with us. We're great really excited. Yeah, and some, yeah, yeah, welcome. You've done some, sounds like some amazing stuff in the last few years. Do you want to sort of Give us a rough idea of what what it is, what, is, what have you been doing out there in the world? You know? Well, what I've been doing really is taking the things that I learned by by the work that I've done in the Monadnock region, uh, taking it on the road. My specialty is working with adolescents, and so I've been doing a lot of training with people in other countries about ways of using action methods, psychodrama, drama therapy, for working with uh, adolescent populations. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also do some work with um, survivors of trauma, uh, and that's a kind of a, a subfield. Mm -hmm. But most of what I do in my travels relates to adolescent work. I consult to a um, psychiatric hospital in northern England, to several programs for incarcerated youth in England, um, and have done trainings for di at different conferences in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. usually focused on, on youth. Um, we have a, 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 a mysterious box here in front of Mario, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But um, I wonder if you could just sort of define for us what, what is psychodrama exactly? Thank you for asking, because so many people <laughs> hear psychodrama and they think Alfred Hitchcock. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. um, the word psychodrama comes from the Greek psyche, which doesn't mean crazy, it means soul. And so if you literally translate psychodrama, it's the soul in action or the essence in action. It's not necessarily a, a religious concept. The psyche mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily religious, but it was the, the essence of who we are uh -huh. and how to take the essence of who we are and put it into action. And the exciting thing about it is that we're kind of the sum total of our life experience. And particularly when we're children, everything affects us and kind of gets taken inside and gets stored in different places of the brain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can get confused between what's me and what's the part of my dad that I carry inside and the part of my mom and the part of my brother and the part of this life experience and that life experience. And what psychodrama does, it says, okay, let's take all these inner thoughts and feelings and put them out and enact them and get people to play different roles and be able to take everything out and kind of shuffle it around and re-examine it and then be able to say, okay, all right, I see, that's, that's not really something that was mine. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, that's mm -hmm. been, you know, my mom's fear that I've been carrying all these years. I can let go of that now. Say, thanks, mom, for caring, but I don't have to carry that with me now. So, so I, I can reintegrate my life experience in different ways. So the question that I, I'm imagining some of our viewers might be asking, um, maybe particular, and, and I think you just started to answer it, but I wanted to, to really ask it outright. And maybe, maybe particularly our, some of our male viewers is like, why would I want to go back and dig around in all that history? What's the what's the payoff? Why? And and also, you know, by extension, why are people wanting you to do that in England and Australia? And so forth. What's the what's the benefit? 
Right. The benefit is, and again, it's not always the right choice to dig around in the past. Sometimes we make the choice to let's just look at what's going on right now, and particularly in working with teenagers, more mm -hmm. effective to work on right now than the past. But the benefit is that um, we can all think of times when something's happened in our life, when something happens or someone says something and we react, and we get really angry, and then afterwards we think, God, why did I get so angry, mm -hmm. you know? Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, I've known Damien a long time. He's my friend. He, he made a comment. Why am I so angry? Or, you know, what, what is it about what happened with Forrest the other day that, that made me want to leave? Mm. And so it's a way of helping to sort out the stuff that got filed in the wrong place. I mean, our brains are wonderful in the way information gets filed is really great. But sometimes it gets filed in the place and then it jumps out when we're not aware. Mm -hmm. So it helps us have better um, control over over those kinds of things and not get more understanding. Up, of, right, and not get yeah. caught up in the stuff that um, that is going to get in the way of me being able to relate to you as you and not right. Oh gosh, yeah, he reminds me of my brother. There was that thing with my brother. Every time I see Forrest, I'm thinking of my Sorry. brother. I mean, Sorry, that's, Mario. A, that's a simple, a so, simple explanation. But I think that so is it fair to say it takes sort of these things that are sort of working behind the scenes within us that we're not necessarily mm -hmm. fully conscious of behind the scenes. Good metaphor. Ah, well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and, and, and makes mm -hmm. backstage my right. Brother. It and invites brings them, them on and stage. It brings them on stage. Oh, it yeah. makes them more more overt. That's right. To the point where we can actually look at them and and make choices about them. Right. Okay. Exactly. So exactly. Maybe and get to the box. Maybe we should. Yeah. Because the thing about the box is when you do psychodrama, normally you do it with a group, but sometimes you don't have a group available. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, a woman in Australia named Annie Rosenthal uh, and a fellow in England named John Casson who said, well, what about if we do psychodrama uh, in miniature? Mm -hmm. And so Annie Rosenthal, uh, this is a model of the stage that J.L. Moreno used in Beacon, New York hmm. from the early 30s up until the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, that psychodrama was done. I mean, nowadays, psychodrama can be done at one end of a room. Mm -hmm. But working on a stage with different levels and hidden places and a balcony uh -huh. and mm -hmm. all those things can be really, really helpful. And if we don't have a group, if you grab those things on the floor, we can use, you know, little objects instead of group <laughs> numbers, right. Uh, these are only two drawers from a six drawer uh -huh. thing that I have with lots and lots of objects that I've sure. been collecting over mm -hmm. the years. But, you know, I thought these would be a, so a good have lots way of to, yeah. right. A lot of, lot of uh, Burger King trinkets here, I think. Yes, there <laughs> are, and action heroes, and yeah, yeah. Uh, things yep. from trips to Disneyland. Oh, a Smurf, mm -hmm. I haven't seen a Smurf in ages. <laughs> yep. oh my That's gosh. Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, I think I recognize him from a doll's house, maybe. <laughs> right, you'll notice, no, you'll notice that one of his ears is missing. Oh, oh. you're <laughs> right, you're absolutely right, look at that. Okay. So yes, I get strange oh, well, things yeah. from right, people. This is great. This is so the stage, you know, also in a sense, the way this having the advantage of a stage is the stage also becomes a um, a, a useful tool in where people are, where these right. objects are positioned. Right. Exactly. Has, has it shows the relationships between. And, right. And yeah. one of the great things about working with the stage, particularly nowadays with digital cameras. Mm -hmm. is that as we're working, you know, if I were working with you as a client, as we're going, we're taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And then we can have a photo journal uh -huh. of the whole process yeah. mm -hmm. so that you can refer back to it. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and if you are in a situation that, was, you know, that you did some work on here and that similar situation comes up, you can go back to the, the photos and say, oh yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm what that was about. Or you might yeah. say, ah, okay, that was a piece with, that we didn't figure right, out. Right, right. A little record of your work. So That's it's great. A, it's a well, maybe we could have a little demonstration to give people an idea of actually right. what we're talking about here. Great. Yeah, what I was thinking is to use this uh, and to use the two of you to help create a picture of the um, world of the adolescent male in New England. Uh -huh. right. And uh, I do a lot of traveling. My basic hypothesis is that teenagers around the world are more like each other 
then they're like their parents, regardless mm. of what culture they're mm. in. Interesting. And particularly in the parts of the world that I travel in, which are pretty Western cultures, I think mm -hmm. that's really true. Mm -hmm. Now, just let me clarify that point, because that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that, the, that, they're, that the parents in different cultures are different from each other, depending on the cultures that they're from? But the teenagers from different cultures are more like each other, regardless of what culture they're Right, from. and they're more like each other than they are like their parents. Right. So yeah. teenagers okay. in Australia have more in common with teenagers in America <laughs> than either have with their parents. Right, hmm. okay. Uh, Interesting. Australians and Americans have quite a bit in common. If you mm -hmm. go from Australia or America to South Africa, mm -hmm. you'll find some really significant cultural differences between the adults. Mm -hmm. But even the, the kids in South Africa, probably have more in common mm. with kids here mm. than they s often do with their parents mm. as awesome. cultures wow. change yeah. and as de demands to become Western, which yes. is a huge, yes. huge thing that countries yeah. are, mm -hmm. um, the, are dealing with. And with the penetration of the internet and, and all that, that there's just this shared thing. And we could, we could have a whole another couple of shows right. to talk about <laughs> all that. But if we're going to yeah. be here, yeah. what, I'd, what I'd like uh, either of you to do, fiddle around in yeah. there, mm -hmm. and can find an object that could represent what you think might be the way the typical New England male is expected to present himself in the world. Ah, okay. All right. All right. Headless, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Um, typical New England male. Typical New England adolescent. Adolescent male. male. Right. 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 Wow. Okay. I'm going to go with this one here. All right. So put him someplace on the stage. All right. Just slide forward. He's got little feet. All right. I'm tempted to go with this one, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to use that one for the moment. Oh, there, there's another one. Put yeah. him somewhere on the stage, too. Yeah. Okay. So we'll uh, assume that we've got a range of typical mm -hmm. adolescent maleness mm -hmm. in New England. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you first yeah. to, as if you were that character, uh -huh. and this is what we call in psychodrama a soliloquy. All right. People who know theater know soliloquy. Let me, let me, get, let me get in with my character. But even in movies, you know, we see mm -hmm. soliloquies when uh, Forrest Bueller talks to the camera and, mm -hmm. and right. you know, has a conversation with right. us. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you are that character, and what are you saying to the world about who you are? I'm saying, I'm saying, don't mess with me, because I am, I'm strong, you know, and I am, I'm a man. I am, I am manly, even if I'm not you know, legally a man. I am, I am manly. I um, am. Uh, uh, nothing really scares me too much. I, I'm out there, and I'm gonna be, uh, you know, on top of my game. But I'm gonna stand behind this pillar because I'm not quite sure that I w really want to go out there too much because there's a lot of strange things going on out there and, and, and I'm not sure if I fit in very mm -hmm. well, but I'm going to uh, sort of stand back a little bit in the shadows here. Great. And we'll recognize that that's one perspective. If we had 15 men here, each mm -hmm. choosing sure. one, there'd be 15 different perspectives. Sure. Let's hear yours. Become that character and what is he saying about okay. who he is in the world? The this is where I know I do well. This is, this is what I know people will recognize as valuable. I, I am an athlete. I am physical. I am I'm good looking. I'm, I don't think too much about anything because I don't need to. I, I, I like being center stage um, and getting the attention for this thing that I know I do well. Mm -hmm. And also as we look at these things, we can think about to what extent do most adolescent males fall short of that ideal. Yes. yes. And even if they hold that as the ideal or the expectation that this is who I am supposed to be, but how many actually feel in their heart of hearts that they right. oops, <laughs> pound on the microphone, sorry, uh, that they that they live up to that. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. I'll ask you to do now is pick a character that represents the um, the part of your adolescent male that he doesn't often show, mm, the part right. uh, that holds his fears and anxieties mm -hmm. that he's been taught, perhaps, that he's not allowed to let people I know, see. I know. Okay. I have no problem. <laughs> this is Linus here, right? This is Linus? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Put them up there. Okay. So uh, while Damien's looking, how about mm -hmm. let's hear from Linus. Yes. Well, Linus is and much... speak as if you are him. I am, I am much more comfortable being up here behind this little railing with my blankie and, and just, just not being... I don't want to be the athlete. I don't, I don't really want to, you know, have to lose or, or beat other people. And I don't, I don't really want to have to be... Um, super strong. I just want to sort of get um, cozy and comfy. I, I, I find that I can sometimes do this with some of the, the girls I know. I can be, I can be kind of gentle and thoughtful with them. I just can't do it with the guys too well. So uh, me and my blanket are going to sit up here and just be, be um, quiet. Mm -hmm. And that last statement that you made about sometimes I can do it with the girls I know, I think that's kind of a changing cultural norm. Because when I think back to 100 years ago when I was a teenager, uh, even having permission to have, to explore that kind of softness with, with girls who are friends mm. wasn't there as much as it is now. Right. That right. there has been a change come about largely through the feminist movement mm -hmm. and women's rights movement mm -hmm. that have, have given men some other choices. Yes. Uh, and that by the time men become adults, I think they're more free to choose some of those choices. During adolescence, the, it's, you know, maybe I can consider that choice, but most of the time yeah. it's not maybe too safe. Yeah. Right? How about, how about um, yours? Okay, there may be some similarities here. Okay. <laughs> but um, this is um, right there. Um, and um, what, what I'm saying here is that I'm, I'm, I'm su actually sweet. I, 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 and I, and I'm, and I'm thoughtful, and I, 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 I have this, you know, this, this desire to, to um, uh, connect with people, and to be, just to be, you know, um, uh, to be friends, and without having to perform or do anything. I like just being, hmm. and so there's, there's that. Uh, um, that sort of quality of, of um, I'm okay the way I am, and mm -hmm. you know, and I and and I'm I'm a sweet person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when this guy hears that, mm -hmm. what's his reaction? Speak from. Uh, did you, did you yeah. just hear that? Yeah. This business of being sweet. Yeah, what do no. you think about that? Yeah, he he's saying, man up, will you? <laughs> his his response is is that that, that is just. This is not the way, um, the way you know, men, strong men, men, you know, behave or think, mm -hmm. and that I, that this, 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 he's probably, he's probably, you know, uh, I'm not sure that he's even, you know, a real man. And, and I, I, I mean, I'm going to be so bold as to try to speak for for this character down okay. there out front, the the athlete, and say it doesn't because a part of the way you characterized him was that he was good looking and this was important and. That sweetness doesn't look that good. I don't know if I like how that looks. I say that as that character. Yep. Right. So we're starting to see, just from a few characters and from where we place them and speaking from them, that we're starting to look at some of the, the pulls in different directions, the ambivalence mm. of being an adolescent man uh, in today's world. Mm -hmm. I think. In general, although probably all general all generalities are false, including this one, in general, the younger the individual, the more they get um, pulled on in the direction of the cultural norm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as kids get older and have more life experience and move into young adulthood, uh, the more chances they have to free themselves a bit from the cultural norm and to acceptance mm -hmm. of in being more fully who they are, wherever between those two extremes that might be. Hmm. Yeah. So, so that's interesting, because that is just a little counterintuitive for me, because I think of um, as, as boys get older towards 18, that as if there is this tightening up of the restraints on their behavior, and they're like, you know, this is, you get this mold this, this, that they have to fit into gets smaller and smaller, but you're saying not 
It's not been my experience in working with kids in the Mnabnak region. It's yeah. the mm -hmm. middle school kids who yeah. are really stuck. Uh -huh. And as kids get into high school, they start expanding oh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But also my experience, I like that. I like that. Them, I like my that. experience of kids is working in groups in which that were co-ed groups in which people felt really comfortable to mm -hmm. start Mm -hmm. being who they were and felt mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. in being who they were. Now what about your work you're doing abroad? Are you finding some of these same, what are you finding with adolescent boys or, or in general mm -hmm. abroad? You know, is it some, like you said, pretty much the same, you know, that they're struggling with these same kinds of like ambivalences about how am I going to be and... Yeah, very much so. I'm, I'm thinking, I just came back from a project I've been working in for several years in a place called Aldine House in, in Sheffield, England. Mm. And it's a secure facility, a locked facility, for kids who have, um, generally, they've done something, they've broken the law, like 14-year-old boy who stole a car, 15-year-old yeah. girl picked up for prostitution. Occasionally, they're put in there because of neglect issues, but mostly mm. they've broken the law. And, um, it's generally more boys than girls, and some of them have a real struggle between trying to come to terms with uh, the real fears and issues about how little support they have when they get out, uh, and trying to stay connected to the, the role of the tough kid that they learned as a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's that similar that similar struggle mm -hmm. between I've got to present to strong, yeah. even if I know that what that did is it got me in jail or it got me picked up by the police because I was trying to be so tough yeah. with other kids who were really tough and we did stupid things. Mm -hmm. In order for me to really come to terms with what I need to do to have a more successful life when I get out, um, that similar kind of yeah. battle. Yeah. And it depends. Yeah. Again, this place, Aldine House, where I, I work, they have an incredible staff, mm. an incredible mixed gender staff that really supports both the boys and the girls in being fully who they are mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. gives them that opportunity. And mm -hmm. that's part of what kids will get in, you know, if they're parts of certain groups, sometimes mm -hmm. in youth groups in, mm -hmm. you know, within their church or mm -hmm. um, other situations that are more um, expansive. Yeah. There's also group situations that are less expansive and that make more demands for adhering to the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah I, I, well, go ahead. I well, I was just going to say, in, do, in, in, in doing this, I mean, we're, we're using a model here and we're using these figures, which is one way to do it. You also can do this, am I right, with, it, with people right. in a room or we on have a stage. A and and, and one they can arrange somebody else to represent some aspect of themselves and mm, give them words. Right. Is that right? And, and then, you know, you pick, you pick s forests, for mm -hmm. example, to play this character, and mm -hmm. you're playing this character, yep. and you can have a dialogue with mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And I can switch you back and forth so mm -hmm. that you get to speak from both of those positions. Yep. And one of the things that this does, whether we're using real people or whether we're using figures, mm -hmm. is that it's engaging the right brain, mm -hmm. the place where imagination lives. Mm -hmm. And so often in working with adolescents, we try to them to the left brain, mm -hmm. which is one of the least experienced parts of the brain in the adolescent. Right. There's tremendous growth going on there, tremendous capacity and new skills mm -hmm. being learned in the left brain, but that's not completed until they're 21 or 22. Right. Yeah. And so when we allow uh, the right brain to get engaged, we help the left brain to make meaning of experience because it's the right brain that can visualize experience and, yeah. and also through work more right brain, we bring the midbrain in and get more into a feeling, mm -hmm. feeling state. Wow! Yeah. And we're bringing and and um, we're bringing out these different aspects. Uh, you know, we're giving physical shape to yeah. different pieces of ourselves. And voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And voice. Yeah. Yep. We have uh, we have just a couple of minutes left. Um, yeah. The 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 thing that that I can see, you know, uh, uh, an immediate uh, um, a f way that this works is it does give permission. I think for to be able to give voice to those different mm -hmm. aspects of ourselves right. in a safe mm -hmm. way that's, that's you know, just enough removed right. mm -hmm. so that you can do that. I, 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 can, I can see And if we were going to go on further, I might say, all right, pick uh, something to represent uh, 
a person or a thing that's really important in your mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And most adolescents tend to pick friends first. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, younger kids pick family, but they'll mm -hmm. pick friends first, yeah. and then yeah. maybe school. And then you start building the whole social structure with all the different parts, and then you can communicate between yeah. the parts. Uh, and from being outside of it, you can start saying, all right, so which of these parts are really serving you, which are getting in the yeah. way? And you can start without having to be judgmental or trying to tell a kid what to do. Right. You can really help them explore. They, they, they kind their of ex world. externalize it, right. and they can make their own judgments right. about what's working. They move everything around, and then they yeah. can go. Oh, that's great. Well, it's it, it's this is it's fascinating, yeah. um, and I, I wish we had another you know hour Always. To, to talk Always. about. Always. But time ago quickly. It does. Yeah, it does. It Isn't sure it amazing? It sure yeah. did. Um, but um, we do want to just take a, a minute to uh, talk a little bit about right. our. Um, men's support yes. that we do and, uh, right. and it's another way of providing a safe place I think for for men to be able to mm -hmm. you know express some parts of themselves right. no, no psychodrama there no psychodrama no. it's a place where we get together and talk but um, um, you know when uh, you know when you when you see the, these men get together and and start to feel yeah. safe with each other yes um, you know that then there are other aspects of, of yeah. going on with them yeah come out that's good it's so you want to say a little bit about yeah, where yeah. and when? It's every Sunday night at 7 o'clock, 7 to 9 o'clock at 25 Roxbury Street, which is right next to Obishan's Hardware in what's called the Life Art Center. Life Art uh, is very generous to donate the space for us there. So every Sunday night, it's uh, no commitment. Um, so uh, I could just walk, drop in? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Just drop a in. Any yep. guy can just come in 7 o'clock. Uh, there's some ground rules, but basically you don't even have to talk. You can just come in and sit and listen. Um, we always yep. have volunteer facilitators who, who uh, kind of keep things, make sure everybody gets out of there by 9, and um, everyone's welcome. All men are welcome. Yep. So, so, yeah. And at the, end of the, at the end of it, with the credits, you'll see our website URL and our phone number. You can give us a call or check out our website and get some more information. Right. How long and has this been going? Almost five years. That's right. Yeah. Five every years since July. Yeah. Every every Sunday Sunday. And it happens every Sunday night, regardless of whether it's Super Bowl night or uh, Christmas or, or whatever. Christmas yeah. or New Year's That's or right. whenever. We're, we're always there. So. so thanks very much for joining us in the men's room. And thank you, Mario, for yeah. joining us here. My pleasure. And we'll be, we'll be uh, back next week. Be on the web and check us out and send us a send us an email or leave us a comment. Yep, I'd love to website. hear from you. I'd love to hear your comments about the program. You can leave your comments on the YouTube website yes. as well. Okay. Thanks very so, much. Thanks a lot, folks.